Hey, it's my day off. And I want to teach you something that um, I, I found really interesting with the COVID patients that I've had. And this has helped me to kind of like a detective to catch some cases that I otherwise, I think I might have missed. Um, so, so look, look at, we'll give you this visual. This is a CBC and I want to explain this and I want to explain the part of it that is unique with COVID that kind of tips us off, gives us a little clue that a patient might have COVID. It helps us to diagnose the disease because it doesn't present the same way in everybody. The typical, what well, you've heard, cough, fever, body aches. Some people have that. A lot of people have that, but some, a lot of people don't. I've had patients that just have abdominal pain or just feel weak or they have a headache or some people have this, you know, loss of sense of smell and taste. And so we do, we, there is the PCR swab that they stick in the nose, but you know, most of the time we don't have a 15 minute test. It takes a day or two. So in the ER, as an ER doctor, we're really diagnosing this without that test. You don't know until a day or two later and you have to make the decisions of what to do about it. So, um, so look at this CBC. Okay. Let me tell you the, the, there's really three things we usually look at on the CBC. One is the WBC, the white blood cell count. You know what white blood cells are. They fight infection. When that's elevated, often we think about bacterial infection, like a urine infection, gone severe, gone septic. Bacterial pneumonia, bacterial infection in the lungs is called pneumonia. The white blood count will go up with that, for example. There's a lot of other things we can learn about that. Leukemia, somebody's on cancer, that might be, their white count might be low. If they're on chemo for cancer, the white count might be low. Then we look at the blood counts. Um, the red blood cells. Typically, we follow the hemoglobin and hematocrit, HCT and HGB on, on that little CBC. If somebody had significant bleeding and they were anemic, we would expect those to be low. And so that um, is how we use the CBC to kind of assess for anemia and the blood count. Again, it's more complicated. There's far other diseases, but for our purposes. And then platelets. We look at platelets too. Now, Below, if you look a little bit below, there is a breakdown of the five different types of white blood cells, including neutrophils, which you might see elevated with bacterial infection, eosinophils, and basophils. Eosinophils, maybe that's up with allergies. These aren't 100%. Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. Uh, monocytes and then lymphocytes. You know what lymphocytes are. T cells and B cells, those are lymphocytes. Now what's really interesting, this is the whole point of the whole thing I'm telling you this, is that with COVID, the lymphocytes are low. And so you look at that CBC and these are three different CBCs from all of patients of mine that had COVID. And the lymphocyte, that breakdown on there is low, which is really, it's, it's a little bit unique and almost odd. Um, and so when I went to New York in April during the surge and worked there, I just observed, I was trying to learn everything I could because I knew I'd be coming back to California. One of the things that I saw like on every patient, and I had heard this, I said, well, you know, they all have lymphopenia. I mean, lympho is the those cells we talked about, the lymphocytes. Penia means low. And so, oh, interestingly, almost all, all of them had that. I was like, well, that's unique. Okay, I just kind of stored that in the back of my mind and I'd heard that. Um, and it, and then coming back to California, as cases of COVID kind of started to rise, I would notice, certainly in the ones that were obvious, people that had fevers and cough and exposures to other people with COVID, like, okay, that person has COVID for sure. But then other people that I wasn't even thinking about, like somebody with a headache or somebody that just kind of felt fatigued a little bit, but didn't have a fever and a cough, these classic symptoms. And I would look at that blood test, that CBC, and I would see that low lymphocyte count. And I would be like, wait a minute, do they have COVID? Go back, talk to them again, ask them more questions and have they been exposed? And that helped me to go back and end up catching a lot of cases that I otherwise would have missed because of that little thing. So let's talk about this a little bit more. Um, we talked about what those lymphocytes were. So, so the next question is, well, why are they low in this viral infection? Typically, you know, with some viral infections, you would expect lymphocytes to go up. With infection, you would expect the white blood cells in your, 
in your body to mount a response and they go up. But with COVID, they go down. So why do they go down? So there's three reasons that I want to tell you about, which I think are interesting. They're guesses at this point. They're hypotheses until we study this more and actually know. One is that the virus directly attacks and kills these lymphocytes, these T cells and B cells. It would do that by attaching onto them with this ACE2 receptor and the spike protein, it gets into the cell and it reproduces and it destroys the cell. And that's how the part of how the virus reproduces. Maybe that's a possibility. That's one. Number two is that the white, these particular white blood cells, these lymphocytes, the T and B cells, they go to fight the infection and you just run out. They get exhausted and they get used up in fighting the infection. That's a potential reason why it's low. The third one that is hypothesized is that there is this cytokine storm, this intense response of our own immune system. So it sends out all these signals. We're under attack with this virus, you know, send the response of the immune system. And that ramping up actually kind of suppresses the T cells and B cells. It's like, no, we're going to use other cells to fight this. You guys kind of stay to the side. And so it suppresses it that with this cytokine storm, which may in this case be part of why the disease gets so severe without those T and B cells that you that really are involved in killing off the virus. When that's low, that's part of the disease. There's a study, I was looking stuff up. So there, there, there was a study that showed that when that lymphocyte count, again, very easy common test that we get, the CBC, when that's low, less than 1.5, um, there's a three times, it triples the risk that somebody would end up in the ICU, be really sick, and have kidney failure. And so this is really a helpful test that seems to correspond to severity, to how severe it is. So the lower that gets, the more severe someone's COVID. So it does seem to be intimately related and part of the disease process. Really interesting, right? Um, and so then, then kind of the next thing is like, well, we have medications. Some people are on immune modulating medications uh, that the, we would expect those folks to be more susceptible to it. You, you know, you would worry if they were on medications that are making their T cells, B cells low to begin with, COVID might make that worse. You know, you think about folks with HIV, COVID on top of that can't be good. Anyway, so there's a test that, that CBC, that low lymphocyte count, there's a little, that is one, one thing that I use as a tool to, to just check and ask myself, could this patient have COVID to kind of go down that road more? Now we're at the point at the end of July and early August in California, the places that I work in, there is so much COVID that the suspicious, you're even more suspicious that anything is causing what people are coming into the ER with. So it doesn't sneak by like it used to a month or two ago when we didn't have as much of it. It's like flu season. Everybody coming in saying they got body aches and a sore throat and a cough and a fever. It's like middle flu season, that's all flu. Well, now it's COVID season and it's all COVID. But anyway, I thought that'd be interesting to share. There's that video, hope you liked it. You know, we do these COVID weekly videos, check them out on the YouTube channel. You can ask me questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, take care of yourself. What was the other thing that I would say at the end of that? Stay safe, take care of yourself and do your part. See you next time.